Hi everyone. Anthony Tano Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Death From Above album, Is For Lovers. This is the latest full-length LP from Canadian rock duo Death From Above 1979, which comes a few years after their rowdy and riffy 2017 LP, Outrage, is now a record I loved for its maxed-out mixes, digitally dystopian commentary, as well as slick choruses. But for as many risks as the duo takes on this project, I mean the track Moonlight delivers the theatrics of a Muse song but still kicks ass, I'm still left wondering what exactly is next for this anomaly of a band that dropped a classic record in the mid-2000s and then seemingly dropped off the map, only to return with their sophomore album ten years later. Now, between the two LPs Death From Above dropped in the 2010s, I think they've pretty much solidified the fact that they are back and here to stay. But what is the long-term plan here? Obviously the duo can't keep making the same record over and over and over, especially the fourth time around. Which I think Jesse and Sebastian know, the more hands-on approach they take to Is For Lovers shows this. They also switched to Universal Records for this LP, who they say gave them complete and total creative control of this project. Which leads to some interesting and mixed results. The most noticeable change being just how tight of a squeeze the sound of this LP is, which has always been the case with DFA to some degree. Many tracks in their back catalog may not contain much more than bass, drums, and vocals, but damn if every sound isn't just maxed out to the point where it's just Tetris blocked in as snugly as possible into this matrix of noisy dance punk and hard rock. And yes, on Is For Lovers it feels like there's even less room to wiggle around in, which has its upsides and has its downsides. A positive being that tracks like Free Animal, NYC Power Elite Part 1, as well as 1 Plus 1 end up being the total and complete ragers that they are. The distortion on 1 Plus 1 is so deliciously crunchy, the drums blast it out. Meanwhile, the vocals are so in my face I can feel the breath off of them. The track is rockin', it's sensual, it's uncomfortably close but still fun. Lyrically, the track Free Animal encourages people to break free of capitalistic rat race conventions, I mean, if you can, I suppose. But the selling point of the song really are its wild, roaring, octave bass riffs. The pounding kick drums are fantastic as well, and I love how hot and overwhelming the mix becomes on the very back end of the song, too. And again, the sound of NYC Power Elite Part 1 does kick ass, but what I loved even more when I dug into it were the irreverent lyrics about uh, trying-to-be-hip CEO types. I love how the verses just mock these people mercy and while the sound overall may be very fast, very aggressive, that chanted chorus, that NYC power elite, feels almost like a callback to an old Ramon song or something. So yeah, in many respects, these tracks sound like a more maxed out version of the DFA 1979 that we've known up until this point, and there are a few tracks that almost hint toward an influence or uh, a sound that's kind of pointing this record in that direction, as Modern Guy and Totally Wiped Out feature these bellowing, exaggerated vibratos that uh, feel like something off of, I don't know, a Queens of the Stone Age record. The sound of these tracks overall is very like songs uh, for the deaf. Which is absolutely not a bad reference point to have. It's one that frankly I don't hear enough in a lot of modern rock music. But damn if this record doesn't feel at least a little bit derivative with it. With all of that being said though, I think the real Achilles heel of this LP is in its extreme approach to volume in mixing preventing DFA from really being able to add any dynamics into the mixture here. Case in point, part two of NYC Power Elite, where the duo attempts uh, to throw in some reverb, some slower riffs, more dramatic tempo, really feels like the duo is trying to feel out the space on this track, but the distortion and compression leave them really with no space to feel out. I feel the same way to a degree about the song Glass Homes. The lyrics do come off a bit reductive in my opinion, 
opinion when it comes to online discourse, though I can generally agree with the idea there are a lot of people on the internet who are willing to just eat each other alive over seemingly minor disagreements. And of course, nobody's perfect. But really the most awkward thing about this track are the harsh shots of distorted chords and the bubbly synth arpeggios. Along with the beat, it all fuses together into something that sounds like a demo from uh, Daft Punk's Human After All. The vocals, the song structure, are really the track's only two saving graces. And while I do appreciate the duo's attempts at working some other textures into this track, again, the sound, the distortion, the lack of space anywhere for anything to move or wiggle or kind of spread out prevents the added layers from really doing much. The one exception to that issue on this record, though, is maybe the closer, No War, which is not my favorite song here, but I will say the dire and eerie synth leads and arpeggios, along with the droning, elongated uh, bass notes and bright vocal harmony layers, for whatever reason here, all of these different elements seem to have at least a, a bit more room to make their case. So again, even if it's not the best song here, at least this track sonically does give the record the relative feel of a grand finale. And there's also the curious inclusion of a piano ballad on the song Love Letter, something I was pretty excited to hear the duo attempt. The punchy drums, raw pianos, and passionate lead vocals on the verses are all great, but God is the hook on this track flaccid and just drags on forever. It's like everything that the track had going for it uh, really just kind of melts into this incredibly bland chorus. I gotta say overall, this new DFA record, I liked it, but I'm not crazy about it. Overall, the sound of this thing to me is like the duo trying to take everything that DFA ever was and really rebuild it for themselves from scratch, which is certainly an honorable task, but this record still sounds like that task is ongoing as of right now, that Death From Above 1979 is still under construction. Feeling a light to decent six on this one, Tran? Zition, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like, please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head. It's another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Death From Above 1979, uh, forever.